Hi, and welcome to another web exclusive here on the MacGuffin Podcast. I am Brandy, and I am here with Alan. Hello, everybody. And last time, we talked about our top five Disney films, each animated films. This time, we're taking it in a very different direction, and we're going to talk about our top five revenge-themed films. Um, And I guess I'll start with number five. And uh, my fifth movie is Whatever Happened to Baby Jane? Uh, 1962, Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. It's basically, um, Betty Davis plays Baby Jane Hudson, who was a child star whose sister then became, uh, eclipsed her in adulthood as a movie star, and now they're both well past their prime, and the entire movie is basically just one long, crazy experience of... Betty Davis trying to make her sister's life miserable to get back at her for having taken the limelight when they were young. I think uh, we, this is perfect because just like last time, <laughs> you chose a film that I haven't e- haven't seen. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this tell is like me a why, classic why, gothic yeah. crazy exercise. Set. This is a, have you ever heard the like. The, the quote from it like but you are you are in that wheelchair oh, like okay. this is like she's got her locked up in the in the room she's just like it, it's a crazy exercise I recommend it it is one of the weirdest and uh, one of the t- most twisted movies I've ever seen okay uh, for my number five uh, I am going to go with Christopher Nolan's Memento uh, starring Guy Pierce as the character of Leonard um, you know, it's a guy who uh, has his wife killed and he has memory loss, uh, which makes it kind of interesting because the last thing that he remembers is his wife dying. So mm-hmm. every time he wakes up, every time his mind like reverts back upon itself, he's feeling those feelings and uh, he's just scorned ever since that moment. Uh, I like the fact that yeah. he has to use notes to make himself uh, remember uh, the tattoos, you know, classic stuff. Uh, it's, it's a, a great, great film. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's one that has been talked about on the MacGuffin before as just a classic, basically. Um, if you don't like it, then what's wrong with you? <laughs> weird, <laughs> one weird. of those kinds no. of movies. Yeah. Like, yeah, very absolutely. much one of those kinds of movies. All right. So my number four is the original Get Carter from 1971, directed by Mike Hodges, starring Michael Caine in his prime. He is Jack Carter and his brother, who is somehow involved, they're both somehow involved with the British mob going off. His brother has gone out of town, back to their childhood town, and been killed in what is supposedly being, he's being told was a drunk driving accident. And he knows that that's total BS. And he is in town to figure out what really happened and kill the person who killed his brother, basically. Randy, we are on a great roll (laughs) because I have not seen this film either. (laughs) God damn it. I feel like an idiot. What am I doing here? Oh, Uh, it's okay. I know that it was remade with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, don't watch that one. Really? Watch the original. It is strange and dark and gritty and Michael Caine is just this very, like, eerily calm, contained, just a but... He's just crazy, and the character is great. There's a scene where he like goes into the boarding house where he's staying. The old lady who's leading the boarding house is like sitting there knitting or something. He just goes over to the phone, calls up his lady friend, and has phone sex with her right in front of the old lady. There is nothing wrong so, with phone sex. He's a badass, and you should watch the movie. <laughs> just for phone sex, I'm gonna watch yeah. that. Uh, my number four pick is uh, Max Katie from Cape Fear. Um, okay. And you're talking about the Scorsese Cape Fear, I'm guessing. Yes. I was so close to putting the original with Robert Mitchum. You know, on you my can really go for the the original or the remake. Yeah. I kind of prefer the remake uh, because it's not so black and white, pretty much. You know, mm-hmm. it's not so much the good guy's the good guy, the bad guy is the bad it's guy. Literally not you so know? black and white. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the remake, uh, the the main character, who's played by Nick Nolte, he's not a good person, mm-hmm. right? I mean, he cheats on his wife. He has this broken relationship with his daughter. Um, he he fucks up the uh, the court case so that Max Katie can go to jail. Um, and De Niro pretty much uh, exploits all of that, mm-hmm. you know. So you can kind of almost sympathize with why he wants to get revenge on uh, Nick Nolte and his family. 
So I don't know. I like it. Uh, I I appreciate uh, the movie. So it's yeah, cool. I prefer the original. Like I think the the remake is interesting, but I don't really like the tone of it very much. I don't know. It's not for me, but. Mm. Good, good one getting Cape Fear in there. All right. Mm. My third one, and this is where my picks get a little weird, um, is Rushmore. Rushmore. Wes Anderson, 1998. Okay. Um, you know, it's not necessarily the main theme of the movie, but the whole section where Max Fisher is just obsessed with the fact that he thinks that Mr. Bloom has gotten with Miss Cross and he's got to, like, get... He's just... He's filled with jealousy with for so many people and so many things in the movie and it always mm -hmm. feels like he's just trying to exact his next gag or prank of some kind that's going to help him somehow be back on an even playing field with mm -hmm. the people mm -hmm. in this bizarre love triangle that he's yeah. manufactured. Yeah, I mean it's a really interesting film. Uh it's not my favorite Wes Anderson film, uh but I really I appreciate, it. you mm -hmm. know, it's something you haven't seen before from uh, a guy that's you know coming up uh, uh i like the characters um it, it's funny it's dark uh yeah it's a good film it's it's hilarious and it's definitely like uh jason schwartzman back when you could still really like sympathize with him and he didn't just have to play a douche all the time yeah, <laughs> like, exactly yeah um for my third uh or number three pick uh, i decided to go a little bit more on the serious side and i picked steven spielberg's munich uh mm -hmm. starring Eric Bana. This will uh, make you feel better because I haven't seen it. Yes. <laughs> yes. It feels good. Sweet revenge. <laughs> um, I think the film really takes... Now, do you know the story of mm -hmm. Munich? Yeah, about the 1972 uh, yeah. Yeah, terrorist yeah, attack. Um, it really takes a look at the consequences of revenge. Um, Eric Bana plays the, uh, a character who's sent out to do justice on the people that are responsible for uh, this attack. And the more he delves into the mission and the more he kills people uh, taking justice or however you want to call it, it becomes more like this moral issue, like how far is too far? Um, how far do you go from someone seeking justice to the actual pe person uh, that you're trying to do the justice on, pretty much? You know, in a way he has this uh, weird feeling that he's becoming a terrorist also. Um, it's a very uh, intense movie, uh, a very risky movie by Spielberg. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely something to check out. All right. Yeah. Um, number two, getting up there, uh, Inglorious Bastards. Uh, yes. uh, specifically, Shoshana and her um, quest to take revenge for the death of her family in the opening sequence. Um, I love this whole movie, um, but the opening sequence and the ending are basically like really where the the money is basically mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, that, that opening scene is a very intense scene. I mean, to think that that entire scene was happening above uh, Sh mm -hmm. Shoshana, Shoshana. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, it's heartbreaking to think that your entire family uh, gets destroyed like that uh, in front of your eyes. Um, yeah, yeah, and I just completely fell for that actress, Melanie Laurent. Like, I can't wait to see her in everything that she ever does, basically, because the way that she is so controlled for so long and then just loses it at the end mm -hmm. i mean it is fantastic to watch i absolutely love that movie the, that's and a, that's she was my favorite part of it like by miles that was a great final scene with the screen and the fire yep. and everything it was awesome, yep. it was awesome. <laughs> uh my number two pick is the korean film old boy yes uh, i left this on my list but i am really glad that it's on yes yours. uh i mean it's that movie it's kind of hard to talk about it because there's so many twists. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many changes of pa pace. Uh, there's a lot of fucked up shit that happens in that movie that well, it's, it's kind of hard to talk about. Well, it's basically the clash of two revenge plots, you know? Like... That's true. It's not just about the revenge of the main character. There's other people seeking out revenge. Uh, like I said, I, I don't want to get too into it because, you know, you'll give away but something really big. It will blow your mind. Yes, it will blow your mind. I, did, blow I, I heard that they were actually going to do an American remake of that. Oh, and I don't know how the Nicholas hell they're going to Cage do it. Or, or something like that. Yeah, Will Smith. Yeah, David Will Smith. Spielberg. Yeah, I don't know how they're actually going to fucking do that because there's there's things that happen in that movie that no way they'll ever show yeah, in America. Yeah, they're not going to be eating a live yeah. squid, that's for sure. Yeah, that um, was... That was <laughs> and that is the tamest thing that they can't do on there. That is pretty much so. the tamest thing. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. Yeah, it is amazing. <sighs> All right. My number one film for our revenge sequence is... The Princess Bride, and 
Inigo Montoya's quest yes. to find the six-fingered man and kill him. I mean, this is probably my favorite movie of all time. I've definitely seen it more than I've ever seen any other movie. I was really obsessed with it when I was a kid. Um, and I mean, there's just no scene in a movie I would rather watch than him getting that revenge. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I want my father back, you son of a bitch. <laughs> like, that's just like the most triumphant moment in all of film for me. <laughs> he so. is definitely the most interesting character in that entire movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think of Wesley and Princess Buttercup, I mean, they're, he's definitely they're great. the most developed. He's definitely the most developed. He has a backstory. Uh, the other two, they're more like this. I mean, they're all on the same playing field, same level. Mm -hmm. He's more dynamic. Uh, I think whenever uh, you ask someone about that movie, they'll spit out that famous yeah. line, you know. Uh, if you ever read the book that the movie is based on, too, which is amazing, it has this whole section that's a whole other backstory for him that is just phenomenal. Sweet. So. Okay. Uh, my number one pick is uh, Tarantino again with Kill Bill uh, and The Bride. Gotta have it in there. Um, I mean... The whole thing is great. The first one and the second one. I prefer the second one because you get to learn about the backstory of I Beatrix Kiddo. Uh, you know, you have that classic uh, Tarantino dialogue. And the, the, the nice thing about it is that you actually get to learn about why uh, Bill and his crew did the shit to... Uh, to Uma Thurman's character in the first movie. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really good, great Another action. Another one where there's different levels of revenge working. Absolutely. With different characters. Yep. So that is my number one pick. High five. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, you can see more of this sort of thing if you were into it. Yes, on please let us know. I mean, yeah, there's there's a ton of revenge films out there, so please let us know yeah, which ones you want. Yeah, it was it was really hard for me to narrow it down. I really wanted to get Jason Voorhees in there too. I'm just gonna cheat and put that <laughs> on the end. <laughs> but, Sweet. Yeah. All right. See you next time. Later.